Good morning, folks. We've got some gorgeous plasma filament dances around the northern polar crown seen here in ionized helium. We're going to hit the storms, earthquakes, and top science news of the day starting at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours was very quiet on our star. The equatorial coronal hole patches are small. The incoming bright point lacks proper sunspots beneath it. And we're going to have to have a soft alert looking ahead for cosmic ray excess with the solar wind dropping out in intensity taking geomagnetic unrest with it, and without much to change that picture in the coming day or two. We did see a sun-diving comet come up from the Kreutz position in the south, a brief brightening and then a fade as it reaches the most intense particle bombardment and photoionization. Top quake of the last day struck Mexico. It came just a few hours after a blot echoed to the southeast, but this intraplate rumble out in the middle of the ocean raises the eyebrows the most. You lost out there, bro. Anyway, parts of the east felt like an ocean yesterday. More tornadoes dropped out of the system and a few record rainfall marks were set. And I want to show you a different look at our usual lightning mapper. In Florida and off the Carolina coast, we saw constant flashing with the large intermittent flashes around it. Now, while the bigger intermittent ones seem to be the most energetic, the intensity mapper goes off or shows it is the more constant non-stop flashing that delivers the big show. The storms are not done, by the way. As last night says goodbye to Florida this morning, another low dives off the mountain range out west and will produce again tonight in the middle of the country. We start with the aesthetic piece today in the news as the USGS has just released the most comprehensive moon map ever. They pieced together different mappings from different missions and have a number of excellent resources there on the link provided with the rest of today's resources below the video. Up next, we're starting to see more of the airline industry papers on solar flares and the need to reroute polar flights due to radiation risk. We start seeing more of these at the start of every sunspot cycle. The industry has been doing those reroutes over time with much success, but it's nice in this new paper to see them matching the modern state of science and in including the solar super flare event. They do timidly advise it is still a manageable solution, but with the caveat that it requires no atmospheric stripping because if there is atmospheric stripping, it would be cataclysmically dangerous for those in the air. And with a weakened magnetic field, I bet that's a big possibility. For those grinding out the slow progress in cosmology, we've got scientists not only blaming dust for their inability to properly account for the cosmic physics, a point on which they'll get no pushback from me, but it was surprising to find they're claiming the dark energy equation of state biases were so large. They found that the lack of accounting for dust actually caused the largest biases there with the dark energy. The double-edged sword of supercomputer time is up next. Huge allotment given to the cosmic jet simulations and their effect on surroundings. The caveat here is it's only as good as the inputs. If they use the new Taurus jet electromagnetic model, they get one answer. If gravity is their god, they'll get another. Last but not least, folks, Chandra claims to have spotted a captured star. All of a sudden, a flashing X-ray return alerted astronomers that something was happening and they say a star got a little too close to a plasma nucleus, or what they call a black hole, and was ripped of its atmosphere. The material tornadoes in and ionizes, beginning to shine in X-rays. The material begins to form a torus around the central modulation point, and that is critical too. Because in theory, there should be an exclusion zone within, a region where the material is repelled from the center as shown in this ISS experiment, the Z-pinch does create that central modulation point, which is like the plasma core some think exists at the center of stars and planets, and a torus around the exclusion zone. The electric Parker spiral disk emanates outward radially from the torus. Folks, just on the homepage of our website alone, you've got tons of resources on all our topics of coverage. Website members, you've got about 400 more hours waiting in podcasts and deeper look episodes. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.